climate disasters are happening all over the world every day. After an earthquake killed an earthquake killed a climate catastrophe. Oh my God! The news about them impress us, make us sad, or frighten us. But right away, there comes a thought that it happens somewhere far away, and it won't happen to me. But it seems like that only until it happens to you personally. I don't know, I got really scared. There was smoke and we started to suffocate. No smoke, friend, in it. I looked in my mirror and I'm on fire. We only had minutes to get out. Anyone can become a victim of the ruthless climate Cerberus at the most unexpected moment. Why? We are going to show you the stories of people affected by climate disasters. There are millions like them around the world. As you listen to them, try to answer yourself a simple question. Will you be ready when the climate Cerberus comes to your home? My name is Douglas Franklin Ryan, and uh, I, I survived the McKinney Creek fire. We could see smoke over on the other side of the ridge. And at one point, it looked like the smoke had stopped and nothing but white clouds and steam were coming up. And then it just came over the mountain. It was coming right down the hill toward it. I didn't really, what wasn't concerned about it. It was on the other side of the river. And um, it wasn't very aggressive coming down the hill. Then we noticed the hot spot at the very tail of it. And it jumped the, jumped the river and then jumped the road. And so we had fire coming up on both sides of us. And so we thought we had half hour, 45 minutes to get out of there. We only had about seven or eight minutes in, in reality. And I ran in the house, the man named John Kogan in there. He was uh, the uncle of one of my roommates. And he's, I think he's 74. And I went in there, I said, John, we gotta go. He goes, I'm not going anywhere. I said, yeah, he goes, I've seen this a dozen times. I've lived here 30 years. I'm not going anywhere. He goes, if I leave here and I lose everything, it'll kill me. If I stay here and die, I'll have to take that chance. But he passed away in the fire. That and five dogs on the property. Why have the fires in California been getting worse in recent years, burning more forests and towns and making it harder to put them out? In 95, there was a malfunction in our planet's core. Because of it, magma rises from the Earth's interior, boils and extends in volume. Its pressure upon the Earth's crust grows. Along the faults in the crust, there occurs degassing, release of gases from the planet's interior, and this causes fires. California is located precisely in such a fault zone. The increase in fires there is an alarming sign. It means that magma is rising in that area. The hurricane actually took a different trajectory than all hurricanes. It swore to east and turned back to the south, which hurricanes usually don't do. In 1997, there was Paulina, a Category 5 hurricane. In fact, Agatha was here in this area. It was more devastating than Paulina. So I live about 100 meters from the ocean. The water level had reached like four or five feet. I don't know, I got really scared. I thought maybe like the water would start coming in through that little window and that like we would have like, I don't know, where, I didn't know where we were gonna go after that. It was like, there was water everywhere. And when I went outside, yeah, I still, I still can't believe like the destruction that happened in such a short amount of time and just like <laughs> how we all want to believe that we're always going to be safe but that's not the reality climate change is going to affect every i mean it is affecting every single person now
There was a fire on September 3rd. It started in the afternoon. You could see the smoke very far away. Then closer to the evening, everything just burned up in a blink of an eye. The police officers were running into the houses and shouting, run for your lives as fast as you can, save yourselves. People were evacuated. There were buses, rotation workers. Some evacuated in their own cars. Everybody evacuated as fast as they could. People grabbed things they could stuff in their cars and left. My daughter grabbed me and her four children, put us in the car and we drove off. A very large flame was coming. There was smoke. We began to suffocate. When I drove closer, to my house, I wasn't shocked. I was hysterical. Only the walls were standing there. Everything was burned. The house, the cars, the documents. There was nothing left. That was unbelievable. I don't wish anyone to see anything like this. It was terrifying. In my 60 years, I had never seen anything like that. Not even in a horror movie, to be honest. We're going to keep living here. Plus, there's a forest, nature, and fresh air all around. It seems like yesterday, everything was there, everything was good. And now, you're standing here and looking around, and there's nothing. It, is, it was something that we were not even expecting. Like, you know, it, it just came within the blink of an eye. Like, uh, 24 hours ago, everything was perfect, and then uh, we came to know that the flood is almost here. We have suffered a lot here. Our rice crop has been washed away in the flood. There was water all around us. No electricity. We had nothing to eat or drink. We were alone. People were uh, crying. People were uh, going out of their homes. They were uh, struggling to save their homes. The most shocking uh, we saw four to five children and one mother flowing in water. There was nothing to eat, only water, which we survived by drinking. Cattle were also dying of hunger. This is the whole scene before you. Our houses have fallen. We are just living under such an open sky. Across Pakistan, more than 1,000 people have been killed for the last 24 hours. There have been floods before, but it was not expected that there will be so much flood this time. You know, this devastating flood in Pakistan, you know, there it's, it's a wake-up call, not only to the Pakistan, but to the world as well on the threats of climate change. And this record-breaking rain would devastate any country. Why have the monsoon rains in Pakistan become abnormally heavily? In recent years, there has been a sharp acceleration in the rotation of our planet. This is causing magma to rise actively from the bowels of the earth towards the surface. The red hot magma is getting closer to the crust and is causing groundwater to evaporate in large quantities, causing catastrophic floods in different parts of the world. We didn't expect it. The weather was just clean. I've been here in the Netherlands for almost 36 years and I've never seen a tornado like that before. This is insane. It can damage a lot. And what is next? Maybe it's going to be in F2 or F3. What's it going to do then? I've never seen in my life like this earthquake. It was really long. We were really scared. Four people in my family died. I buried them today. Moreover, 12 relatives were hurt. I feel helpless. I don't have any money left. Many people were wounded, many people were died, and many people and many homes were also destroyed. Until the end of the day, it were more than 1,000 people who lost their lives, and more than 1,500 people were in Georgia. People were crying and screaming all around because their houses had fallen down. Women and children were trapped underground. Many of them died. Why are there more and more destructive earthquakes in Afghanistan? The increase in the number of earthquakes in Afghanistan is a result of a rise of magma. Because of the increase in pressure, magma rushes upwards towards the crust and increases the number of earthquakes around the world.
there was no prevention because it was not expected. Within one hour, we were flooded. Usually that flooding might be caused by two days of rain. It is for the first time that I saw people desperately leaving their own homes to other places. That was the most shocking part for me. Imagine forcefully being asked to leave your own homes because of a natural phenomenon that you don't have any other thing to do and becoming a refugee in your own city or this place in your own city. So basically the situation was really bad. Uh, young kids got served who are in these houses recovered many bodies. It just came with nobody aware. The area that they are walking sunk, houses sunk, cars were taken off by water. I lost my friend in it, watched the cars sink when I can't tell. And then I come back here in Fujairah, the same thing happened. And I think this is continuing. It's gonna go from country to country. Okay, so far, but this, this is no fucking joke. <laughs> this is no joke. I call Chad. He knows I'm alive. He knows. So, so far, so good. As long as the house holds. So, just okay. Don't, 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 don't worry. Everything's gonna be okay. my gosh I can tell you that I've never I've been here 29 years I've never experienced or seen anything like this um, our families have lost everything it was intense fear watching the water come up our street and knowing we only had minutes to get out It was horrified. My, my trailer was shaking back and forth. I thought Andrew was terrible. This beats Andrew big time. Oh my God, look at this, got the wind. There are many people who do not have the resources to leave. I told my brother we have no choice but to survive or die. You know, like if we don't, if we don't get up, and get our family to safety, you know, the worst could happen, so we did it. The outside. Poor grandma, any baby. You left her that on a message. Yeah, I just said, I love you. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. It's all underwater. It's very sad. I know that there was um, people screaming for help um, and people still on roofs. We don't have a place to go. Today, it was us who suffered. We were attacked by the climate Cerberus. It destroyed our homes, took our lives. 
But now, it's coming for you. Are you ready for its arrival?